Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for being here on a uh, Tuesday morning. A Tuesday morning, three weeks from Election Day, no less. We are right around the corner. Well, thank you so much for the introduction. And thank you for setting the stage about what's important. This is a multi-generational struggle that we're in right now. You talk about how hard it is for people in our generation to get ahead. You also talk about how hard and how difficult it will be if people like Ron Johnson get their way when it comes to the retirement benefits people have worked their entire lives for. It is disgraceful that Senator Johnson wants to put Social Security and Medicare on the chopping block. Uh, the reality is he also wants to raise the retirement age. And if Ron Johnson wants to raise the retirement age to 70, in three weeks, we get to lower the retirement age for him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so again, Mandela Barnes probably serving as your Lieutenant Governor, running for the United States Senate, quite simply because it's time for a change. We need to do things differently. The Senate is broken, does not represent who we truly are as a country. It's a place that's out of touch with the American reality. The U.S. Senate is a multi-millionaires club that quite frankly needs to be broken up because the majority of people in this country are not multi-millionaires. And that is why we see so much stagnation. That's why working people continue to be left behind because the working, excuse me, the voices of working class people are missing. Now, Wisconsin's a hard working place. Folks aren't looking for a handout. People just want a fair shot. And we know we will never get that fair shot as long as Ron Johnson is in the U.S. Senate. Now, this is a person who says a lot of wacky things. Uh, you know, to put it one way, I'm not sure if you saw the debates, but there were a couple questionable statements he made, more than questionable. I mean, just, you know, I really like, I, when he said that CO2 wasn't harmful, or he said that the FBI set him up. You know, he, says all, he says all these wacky things, but what he's doing in Washington is no joke, it's absolutely scary, and it's dangerous. We're talking about a person who tried to overturn the 2020 election, tried to send fake electors to the vice president because he didn't get the election result that he wanted. Essentially looking at every single person in the state of the eye, every voter, regardless of who they voted for, and said that your vote doesn't count, your vote doesn't matter, it's my way or the highway. And that's not the way we do things here in Wisconsin. Ron Johnson does not truly represent who we are. Despite the fact that you know, he went to the U.S. Senate, doubled his own wealth, and is hell bent on making everybody else's life worse. Again, Ron Johnson does not truly represent who we are. And as I've been able to travel the state, both as Lieutenant Governor and as a candidate for the United States Senate, it is a constant reminder of all the things we have in common, which are so many more things, regardless of what zip code, what county you live in. We all have more in touch with each, with each other than we'll ever have with self serving, out of touch politicians like him. Now, Folks just want a decent quality of life. People want good schools to send their children to. People want to be able to go to a doctor, not worry about a surprise bill. When we want to go to a doctor, not worry about some politician popping up and trying to make their decisions for them. It is that simple, it's that easy. And we also want a good job that puts food on the table. And on the other hand, Ron Johnson says we have enough jobs in Wisconsin. Oshkosh Defense got the contract to build the next generation of postal vehicles. They made the decision to move those jobs to South Carolina. And I'm well aware of what a senator can and cannot do. Uh, one thing a senator can do is be quiet. Uh, but we have Ron Johnson who refused to do so. And he said that we have enough jobs. It wasn't a hot mic moment. That was his actual response. It shows how out of touch he is with people's economic reality. And that's why I say it's time for a change. People were dealing with rising costs at the grocery store and at the gas pump. 50 years of precedent being uh, overturned with the Dobbs decision, a decision that Ron Johnson said was correctly decided. He said that if women don't like the laws of their state, like our 1849 criminal abortion ban, then they can just move. It is callous, it is careless, it is out of touch. But again, in three weeks, for all the women that Ron Johnson wanted to move, they get to move him out of office. Yeah. <laughs> We're still dealing with the decline of industries, the factory jobs that gave me an opportunity. When my granddad moved here after serving in World War II. He got a job as a union steel worker, walked into A.O. Smith one day, walked out 35 years later. He was able to retire comfortably with dignity and benefits, most importantly to lay a foundation. My dad followed in his footsteps, working third shift on an assembly line. 
those jobs are going out of state and overseas because politicians like Ron Johnson praise offshore. He says that it makes sense, not taking into account the complete devastation that it leaves in its wake in communities all across the state. And our small family farmers, it squeezed out a large corporations to make it harder for them to compete. The monopolization of farmland here is making it tough for the family farmer who gave us our identity as the dairy state. It wasn't, it wasn't the large, you know, factory farms. I mean, it's a small family farm. And we have a duty and a responsibility to honor that legacy. Now, one thing we need is people who are committed, people who are committed to making things better, people who look at the problem and say they want to fix it, not people who look at a problem and say there's nothing that can be done, which was another response when the topic of climate change came up. Ron Johnson said there was nothing that could be done. But we know better because we've done the right thing before. When I talk about my dad working third shift on assembly line, he assembled catalytic converters. Then we had to have catalytic converters after the Clean Air Act was implemented. And we had new emission standards for vehicles. The catalytic converter was the way to achieve those standards. We needed people to build them. My dad may tell you he did it on his own, but it was <laughs> but it was him, his brother, and thousands of other people that, that got good paying union jobs because Congress took bold action to address the climate crisis. We are in that exact moment now. China produces 80% of the world's solar panels. We can be building those right here in Wisconsin, creating a clean energy economy that will provide opportunities for the future. Right now, my generation is a millennial. We're the first that's slated to be worse off than the generation before us. It is a shame to think that it may have been easier for my granddad to get into the middle class than people in my age group. And as long as uh, we're represented by people who don't share our interests and our values, things are gonna continue to get worse. Now, I'm not here to tell you it's gonna be easy, because it won't be easy. It's gonna be incredibly difficult. But it was also difficult four years ago when we had another challenge ahead of us. And I look at that race like I look at this one. Regardless of how bad Rod Johnson has been for working families, regardless of the fact that he played politics when it came to our veterans who were victims of burn pits, regardless of the fact that he's coming after Social Security and Medicare, regardless that he's a climate denier and will overturn any election that uh, he doesn't support, regardless of all those bad things, that's not what's going to win this race for us. We got to lead with our values. We have to lead with our vision. We have to tell people what it is that we stand for. That's what we did four years ago when we ran on a platform of fully funded public education. And so we did four years ago, we talked about taking climate change seriously and creating thousands of good paying jobs across the state. It's what happened when we ran four years ago and talked about the need to expand healthcare. We are in that exact moment. While Ron Johnson wants to repeal the Affordable Care Act, we should be able to pass towards universal healthcare in this country. We need to make sure that every single overturn an election because he didn't get the results that he wanted. That is the signal that we need to strengthen our democracy, to hold people who want to subvert elections accountable, and to also make it easier for people to vote. Now, hard, we need automatic voter registration, and we also need to get rid of partisan gerrymandering, which can only be done. I personally know what happened. I was born and raised in the city of Milwaukee. Born on 26 and Locust, that's in the 53206 zip code, our state supports our nation's most incarcerated zip code. And when my granddad moved, he got a good job in a safe city. When those factories closed their doors and moved their operations overseas, we saw the decline of opportunity and we saw the rise of crime and violence. Those two are correlated directly. We know what it takes to make our community safe. We know what it takes to make our community stable. And that's the work that I've been committed to doing. I know firsthand, we do not have enough jobs here in Wisconsin. But Ron Johnson sees things otherwise. And the fact that he continues to leave so many people behind is more than enough reason. But we gotta tell people that help is on the way. Help is on the way. We have an opportunity to, you know, within our greatest challenges, we do have our you know, greatest opportunities in my opinion. We have an opportunity to bring back uh, a fair shot at the American dream for every single person. Make sure that every child growing up and every zip code in every county and every community has at least the same opportunities that I had growing up. That's the way we should be doing things in the United States of America. It is completely unfair that over the course of this pandemic, billionaire wealth increased an additional trillion and a half dollars. Seven million people found themselves in poverty for the first time. We have the conversations about inflation and prices going up at the gas pump and at the grocery store. At the same time, these large grocery chains 
and these oil and gas companies and pharmaceutical companies are making record profits. And they're using inflation as a smokescreen to jack up prices on us. And the reason it won't change is because Ron Johnson's received a million dollars from the pharmaceutical and insurance industries. He's received hundreds of thousands of dollars in campaign support from the oil and gas industry. He will never be on our side. He will only put the interests of special interests ahead of working people. And that's why this November 8th is so important. If you care about the direction of this country, if you care about our democracy, because quite frankly, democracy just doesn't seem to be working out for Ron Johnson. If you care about it, you'll fight for it. If you care about a way of life that creates opportunity for everybody, regardless of where they're from, regardless of where they were born, how they identify or who they love, we'll fight for it, we'll show up. We got 21 days to get this done. We're gonna have to show up at every community. We are gonna have to knock on all the doors, we're gonna have to make all the phone calls. Even those text messages I know you love. You can send some of those if you want to. <laughs> we are gonna have to greet people where they are and let people know that we can no longer leave folks behind. That was the old way of doing things. People like Ron Johnson have had their day. It is our time now. It is our time to stay up. something better than we're dealing with now. I absolutely think that the future is worth it. I hope you feel the same exact way. I absolutely believe that better is possible. I know you believe better is possible. That's why you showed up on a Tuesday afternoon. And I, with, with, with everything that we've been through uh, over the last few years, all the difficulties, every time that Ron Johnson has turned his back on us, regardless of if you are a small family farmer, if you are a small business owner, if you are, uh, you know, a, we're everyday working class person. For every person he's turned his back on, we all do get to turn our backs on him collectively. And that's what brings me so much true. But most importantly, more than getting rid of Ron Johnson, we get to do something to make life better for people, for everybody, to create those safe communities, to make sure our schools are fully funded, to make sure that access to higher education and the trades is accessible for folks because the American dream should not be out of reach for people. We can make that American dream a reality. This is a state that was the first to ratify the 19th Amendment, give a woman the right to vote. We're a place that expands and protects women's rights, not a place that takes them away. We're the first state to declare the fugitive slave that in the Constitution, the first state to have anti-discrimination laws based on ability on the books, and the first state to have anti-discrimination laws based on the sexual orientation on the books. We have done incredibly bold things in this state before Ron Johnson does not truly represent who we are, but in three weeks we can do something incredibly bold when we send him back. And one other thing that I've also been able to realize even more in these travels across Wisconsin is that it's not always left or right, red or blue. It's about Ron Johnson who's been comfortably at the top and everybody else who's left behind at the bottom. And when we have these conversations with people, regardless of what their party affiliation may be, uh, regardless of what they thought they may have believed. The reality is it is a fight for freedom. It's a fight for fairness. It is a fight for our future. And in 21 days, with your help, this is a fight that we will win. So thank you so much. Thank you for